Hello YouTubers, welcome to Creepy Pasta Campfire. I'm your host, Robot of Robot Ninja Paradise, and I'm here to take you on a marvelous journey through space and time. And by that I mean I'm here to read another shitty story. Cause god damn it, they all fucking suck, don't they? So this one's called The Transfer Student. So here's the thing. Everyone respects me. Everyone. Unlikely, but sure, whatever. For when some goody two shoes dumbass girl mm, already, okay, tries to take that away from me, I just simply couldn't let her live. It all started about a month ago. We had a new transfer student from America. I live in English, you see. Anyway, as soon as she walked into our classroom, everyone was simply amazed at how pretty she was. But it gets worse. No one noticed me. I mean, who are you? Whatever. I instantly knew I had to do something about it. So, here's what I did. She decided that she would set up her own art club in school. So she would stay back every night to do preparations and organizing. Hmm. Well, typically clubs usually don't meet like every single day. So, it's a bit unlikely. Then again, I could just be from where I'm from. You know, maybe England is different. I slipped into the class that she was working in with a knife held tightly in my hand. I had it I hid it behind my back and walked up to her with a smile. Hey Kim and Hey Kim I added a cheerful tone to my voice. Whatcha doing? I was hoping that maybe I could help with the club. It seems like a really great idea. I would love to join. She looked to me. I could tell that she was confused. She had that kind of look in her eyes. It was perfect. Huh? I thought you hated me. She indeed sounded rather puzzled. Oh, come on, Kim. I giggled. <laughs> a little to make the act a bit more realistic, but honestly, wouldn't that... I don't know, to me, it just seems like when, you know, you try to act super shitty like this, and it's like the other girl's a bit puzzled already, like she kind of like thinks you're up to something. I don't think giggling is going to help, you know? I was immature, and I'm sorry for that, dot dot dot, in truth, I guess I'm just jealous of you, dot dot dot, so dot dot, what do you say, dot dot, wanna be friends, she hesitated for a moment, moment, but then smiled at me, sure, I would love to, um, sure, I would love to, Megan, great, I smirked, <laughs> would it be okay if I did something to you, that I do with all of my new friends, she agreed, I hugged her, pulling a knife from behind my back, and once she hugged back, I drew the knife across her neck. So, this person slit her throat. Actually, that's the thing. Do, do we... Oh, wait. Okay, her name's Megan. Okay. I hugged her, pulling the knife from behind my back, and once again, she hugged back. I drew the knife across her neck. She, slit, she let out a gasp and fell to the floor. She was dead. I laughed like a maniac and stabbed her repeatedly, letting her dead body know how much I hated her. I ripped out her heart and put it in a jar. I also cut off her head and put it in my school bag along with the jar. Man, that jar is so important. You know, I was gonna make a joke about like, uh, you know, it's like, it's a per- you know, I'll get to that later. I pinned her body to the wall with some staples and tape because that's just how it works, you know? It's not like the staple, like, these must be like the sharpest staples, you know? Like, that they're actually able to like, break the bone, you know, that's just not how staples work, I mean, I, I can guess maybe the tape, like, if you had some good tape, you could do that, but the staples, that's just not how they work, I couldn't wait to see the teachers and students reactions in the morning, when I arrived home, I went into my bedroom, adding her head and heart to my lovely, bloody collection, well, wait, if this is some shit you do all the time, then not only would they already have reasons to expect, because you say it's a collection, and it's this last line, welcome to your new home, I hope you have fun with your new friends. So this is confusing. Because it's like, you know, this is, sure, maybe people don't know she's done this before. But usually the kind of individual who do like shit like that wouldn't be, like, a very respected member of society. They'd probably be very isolated. So this whole idea that this, how she puts it, two-shoes dumbass girl, goody two-shoes dumbass girl, Tries to take the respect away from me. And like everyone's ignoring her, right? Oh, so that's the thing. We never really know why. 
or like how she did that, you know? She just seems to hate this girl because she's more popular than her. And also, I'm just going to say, this is clearly self-insert fan fiction. It's, it's a bit concerning, you know, for someone who clearly is at this age to have these kinds of, you know, wish fulfillment fantasies of killing someone they hate. Also, uh, just to make an obvious joke, uh, a girl named Kim died by getting her sli- her throat slit. Obviously, this was written by Eminem the whole time. <laughs> Well, that was the transfer student. Gonna, that was the transfer student. Let's see some of these things. I printed her body to the wall with some staples and tape. So Kim's detected body is made out of crepe paper or maybe cardboard. See, even the comment section pointing out. The, and then this, this plug myself in a psychotic killer crap has gotten worse than a gaming process. That self-insert category tag, self-insert category tag can't come soon enough. Couldn't said have, couldn't have said it better myself. Madden verse, and let's see. Bravo one hundred four says right. This child has been murdered. The entire country has heard about this disgusting crime. Anyway, it's plainly obvious Megan did it. Seriously, she made no effort trying to hide the body or conceal evidence. And Eddie responds with, "Yep." And then he was sorry and puts it like this. How dare that bitch try and start an art club? She totally had it coming. Seriously though, this is one of the worst things I've ever read. At least the Mary Sue the killer crowd makes victims of bullies. What? Sure, the bullies are a name only, but that's more than you did. If you're trying to come across as scary, you felt horribly. It's not scary to kill an innocent, innocent for petty reasons. It doesn't make the reader horrified by the senseless death. She's pissed off at the terrible character. Couldn't have said it myself better myself, buddy. <laughs> and of course, this episode wouldn't be complete without its obligatory Sonic creepypasta because we read so many of those. This one's got Sonic CD Easter egg, meaning I can put something clickbaity in the title. All right, and I'm just gonna assume I know which one they're talking about. But anyways, I was browsing around the internet and was looking at the creepypastas and creepy gaming. Hmm. I found a Sonic CD hidden message story. It was about typing in certain numbers in a sound test and seeing various Sonic images. But one of them carried a disturbing face of Sonic and a disturbing message that was in Japanese. But when translated, it says, Fun is an infinite. They spelled infinite wrong. Sega Enterprises. But below the text, it says Majin, which means demon or devil. I was shocked thinking this was actually true. I looked at a bunch of YouTube videos of the Easter egg and it showed what the image of the creepy Sonic face looked like. When I saw it, I was fully terrified. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of in the same boat as you, buddy. When I was like 12, 10, 12 years old, I saw it. Like, I was a bit freaked out. I wouldn't say terrified, but, you know. I knew it was the scariest, most disturbing image I have ever seen. I never wanted to see it again. It was too terrifying. Okay, I think you're kind of pushing it a bit bit there but I wanted to see it one more time because I knew I had Sonic CD on my shelf which held about 10 to 1000 gig well that's a giant fucking leap oh wait he was trying to do like okay because see there's a 10 comma 1000 right I guess he was trying to say like 101,000 games which it's a very odd number anyway but you know whatever who cares about this guy's shelf my shelf was circled all around my room fortunately I put my games in alphabetical order Order. Oh my god, he's messy. When am I gonna get scared yet? So I had to look through all the games on each shelf I went to. When I found Sonic CD, I went to my basement to get the console for the game. I went back upstairs. I mean, who keeps consoles in their basement? Personally, I keep all my consoles, you know, nearby, easy access. I mean, maybe the basement's easy to get into. Who knows? But I always find it weird, you know. To get the console for the game, I went back upstairs in my room and plugged in the console and started the game. When the game started, I went through the instructions of one of the videos on how to see the image. Once I caught them all, I saw the image. It was true. I covered my face with my hand and only kept my hand cracked open just a bit to see the console and turn it off. Oh, so that's another thing. This is like some like really terrible like fulfillment. He was like, I'm creeped out of this thing, so I'm going to purposely scare myself just to see if it's real. It was 11.04 p.m. Keep that in mind. It's probably going to be important. So I went to bed. When I was sleeping, I had a dream about being at EB Games. Fucking terrifying. I think that's like the uh, UK version of GameStop. They're, they're associated with GameStop, so immediately I'm scared. 
and saw that Sonic was the Q face shopping was about 50 copies of Sonic CD. Well, what a dream, but while that dream was happening, the picture of the Sonic with the Q face popped up. I woke up, and when I woke up, I still saw the image. Nothing else. I felt that my eyes were open. So, next thing I tried is that I pinched myself. So, like, the image burned itself into his red nose, dude. Fuck. <laughs> that didn't work. I was wide awake. I tried closing my eyes, but I still saw the image. And I was screaming. But I didn't care if I was waking people up, you selfish bastard. Besides, I didn't know what time it was because I was blind and could only see Sonic's creepy face. I was flipping out. I was flipping the fuck out. I was smacking things off the shelves. I was knocking my... I was knocking my HD TV on the ground. Then I felt my window. I knew what to do to end this all. I op oh my god, this is a giant fucking leap, isn't it? I opened the window and jumped out to fall to my death. I felt my head hit the ground and I couldn't feel myself. I knew I was dead, but I still saw it. No, you didn't. You're fucking dead. Now today, I still see it. All I can say is that the image I will never get over and ignore. I will always be afraid. All I can say is, please help me. I am crying up here. Please help me. I feel so tortured. Credit to Sonic CD and the City Paddles YouTube video, Creepy Gaming Episode 5, Sonic CD Hidden Message, credit URL provided. This, I think this basically says it all. Void in verse again. These gaming pastas are like a booger on your finger that won't wipe off. Yeah, they all kind of stuck. But it's like, it looks like he's dead, but he wrote this story. That doesn't make any sense. It's like, yeah, I even mean like this hamster says, I never wanted to see again. It was too terrifying, but I wanted to see it more time. Have you heard of a contradiction? I knew I was dead, but I still saw the Sonic with the creepy face image. Now today, I still see it. I'm sure glad that even though you're dead and can only see this image, that it is somehow burned into your mind and still managed to find a way to pose this. It's like, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. It's like, he died. That's the end of the story. He shouldn't be able to see anything. He doesn't have existence anymore. He is gone. Well, what did you expect? This was Creep Pasta Campfire, and I was your host, Robot, and I am signing out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and do all the usual YouTube stuff that YouTube personalities ask you to do. You probably